Good morning, Soul Hubbers. Um, so to continue our very short series around short conversations um, with some of the Soul Hub team, um, coming out of International Women's Day, uh, what was really beautiful is that many of the team felt quite inspired to share something that felt from their heart um, and spoke to women at this time. So the series is called Being in Woman, and we're joined here by Maya Oppenlander. I hope I'm saying your surname right there, Maya. <laughs> Yeah. Um, who, as you can see, well, you can't see because you can't see the sea behind her, but she's based in uh, beautiful Portugal and uh, is a holistic and conscious coach. We always say it's difficult to sometimes have a label for something that's always so um, fully encompassing. Um, so thank you, Maya. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Carmen. It's a pleasure. Uh, and so yeah. today we're going to talk about motherhood, aren't we? Yes, and mothering. So really, it's not limited to being a mother in a physical way. But I very much resonated with this aspect of responsiveness, let's say, that mothering, I feel is a, like an archetype for. And it's not only happens in mothers, it happens in all of us. And I, I wrote a little thingy on Instagram <laughs> around Women's Day, and I felt it's really nature's safety net. It's if things go wrong, because things do go wrong. That's part of the game. There is a plan, and sometimes the plan doesn't work out well. You know, all mothers have good intentions in raising their children, and we all know that it doesn't always work that way. We are limited. And so the mothering, I would say, is also an invitation to mother ourselves, to really see, ah, how is it to have this very kind approach, this understanding, this soothing quality of just pure attention, pure love? I find the word a bit tricky, but in the end, it's love. <laughs> yeah, and responsiveness. I feel that hits most home for what I would like to speak about. I like the way you said then, even mothers don't always get it right. And sometimes I think we see mothering as um, the positive side and the nurturing and the kindness and the compassion for ourselves um, and as you say that the very nature that we might make it wrong or that it doesn't work out sometimes then um, kind of goes against uh, almost what we believe as mothering so being able to hold both of those polar um, aspects of, of the nature of mothering I think is important. Absolutely. Also to, I mean, I use the words right and wrong, just more in inverted commas almost, because it feels like, oh, this is wrong now. And I remember after my first baby, after I gave birth, I was like, oh my God, I'm in the club now. I'm a mother now. I can do things <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I will get blamed for things. They will Absolutely. forever come back to me. <laughs> yes. I mean, don't we point our fingers at mothers? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah. there is some truth in that, obviously, but I feel it's also, you know, there is no single mother. She's part of a context. And so it really depends on that context as well. And it depends on how she has been mothered and how all that goes back. So we all have an invitation to almost heal wounds that go back in time and to see it right. Life has a plan things mostly go along that line and sometimes not and that's part of the experience really <laughs> so i love how you say we hold it both i mean i find that always key i find if we allow for the light and the shadow to both be here that's very powerful yeah 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 and as you say i make no right or wrong you know whether it's always just a i listened to a talk last night from dalai lama you know, and he spoke about, um, you know, he, you, we learn every day. And so if you had every day as a learning day, then imagine living from that place. So it doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't really matter what happens because it's still that you're going to learn whichever way, right? <laughs> How, a great way to live. <laughs> yes. And I feel what we use, usually call mistakes or it went wrong. It's a correction. Because how can we learn? I love what you just quoted. How can we learn if things are just going like la, 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 and there are no edges or there are no 
breaks or there are no like, hey, <laughs> look at this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, so tell me what you mean by responsiveness. What do I mean by responsiveness? I mean, that's something where I felt very clearly as a mother of a little baby, I feel what this baby needs. Mm. It's, I mean, it can't speak, but it's not really a problem. <laughs> it's like, how do I know that I'm hungry? It's not that my belly has to first crumble and then make sounds so I, I can hear it. No, I, I catch it. You know, there are subtle, subtle energies that let me know. And I can feel that emotionally we are connected. So I will feel when I'm standing next to someone who's sad, this responsiveness in me catches it. It's like, oh, what's going on here? Interesting. As you're talking, I'm thinking about the, again, Dalai Lama was talking about the need for dialogue. And so often we talk about our need to speak and express ourselves. And as you say, our, but our natural intuition is to know. And it's almost yes. like, you know, you do that for the first <laughs> couple of months with your baby and then almost you're expecting them to tell you whereas in and it goes against then what you've been doing since birth is intuitively know where, where they're at and what they need yes and I find that sometimes a bit sad that we have this focus on it has to be verbal you know I, I see so often parents go like yeah tell me tell me and I feel yeah well this is really an art to be able to fully communicate where you are <laughs> at, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't expect that from a three-year-old. <laughs> Sometimes I feel you can't even expect it from a 30-year-old or whatever else. Yeah. Yeah we, yeah, we all do really know when we walk into a room or when we first meet somebody, you know, we have a natural instinct, to, you know, what, what mood they're in, you know, whether we want to spend time with them or not, what might be going on for them. But, you know, we, we're not all that good at hiding it. Uh, and it's written in many ways in our body language, in our expression and just in our vibrational energy. Yeah. And it's really relaxing in a way to to start trusting that again. And then we can use words as an extra. I feel words are an elaboration, you know, it's, it's something extra that we have to go into more detail and to, to communicate truly. So, I mean, you've had four children. Yeah, I still um, have them. <laughs> yeah. They're not all children anymore. But <laughs> And so what's changed for you in that mothering? What do you feel um, you honed in on or... Uh, you drop deeper into in that experience with, by the time you got to number four. Oh, absolutely. I felt it's all so easy. Like my fourth child, I felt a bit was like the praline of the whole thing, <laughs> like the cream. <laughs> Lovely. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah, right. It's so simple in the end. And I already had a first glimpse of that with my first baby where I, I realized well somehow I feel like I'm the main problem here you know I'm not sorted enough in myself I have reactions I have insecurities and so I can really say that that changed so I have then it gets really simpler because being with babies nature has a very important way we start with the baby that's simple and then it gets more complex. So we can be lucky that we don't start with the teenagers. <laughs> we can already say what's not true, you know? So it can get much more con confusing. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? Sometimes think it's, people think it's the other way around, you know? Yep. But as with everything, it's all designed in the perfect way. Even nine months prior, you know, the carrying of the baby uh, is all preparing yeah. you for that experience. Well, both of you. Absolutely. I feel it's really beautifully made. And we have this time to expand not only in our bellies, you know, that role, and to tune in and to start with in the end with this responsiveness, because it's an extension, right? Like before that, it's me, it's just me. And then there's another human being. And my responsiveness, you know, takes that one in as well. It's for both of us. And we get prepared. We have nine plus months for that. <laughs> and I guess I would just want to also touch on what you said at the beginning around the mothering, because 
you know, what we've tried to do even in these conversations is to really look at the feminine and masculine and, you know, the, the similarities between us as well as the differences. And as you said, the mothering isn't, isn't for just women, it's for men also. Um, and it's very much about how we nurture ourselves, right? Absolutely. That's why responsiveness, maybe that's obviously not feminine or masculine. It's just the quality in us, in human beings, and it, it exists in, in mammals as well. And so I really encourage that in, in men as in women to start tuning in. And maybe it's a good hint that you gave in a way that it doesn't have to be verbal. I mean, it's very useful and I love the art of communication. But really, this is from a deeper level. It starts first with tuning in with myself, starting to feel what's here and, and without any judgment, without any expectation. That's what I feel the babies teach us, you know? Most people don't have expectations when they see a baby. And what about this baby in us that just needs this attention and this kindness and love? And it's very important, I feel, there couldn't be war. All those struggles we have between, oh, I'm a woman, you're a man, there are these differences, la, la, la. All that kind of melts away and meets in, ah, we have some, some needs that we share and we have ways of celebrating joy that we share in the end. I guess I'm just feeling into if I was sitting here listening um, to you going, oh, how do I, you know, how do I really and start to understand that aspect of myself. If I've never done that before, would, what would you say? What would I say how to start? I feel it starts by hearing it just now. That's already a spark to go like, oh yeah, right. What would it be like to, to listen to myself? What would it be like to become clear what kind of relationship I would want to have with myself? You know, and how will I recognize that? And what does that mean then? And it might mean to stop that voice in the head that says, oh, you could have been faster or whatever else that voice says to you or to whoever listens. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. the, what do I like? You know, is it, how do I pamper myself a bit? And from there on, we can just go deeper. I mean, I think the words in particular, right, people kind of often struggle between their thoughts and them. I very often yeah. get clients who are like, but I've just got these thoughts that keep saying this. And I'm like, but you do understand that the thoughts are you that keep thinking <laughs> the thoughts, you know, and I think we don't sometimes. They think they come in from, and of course, they are voices often of others um, yeah. or, you know, something we've heard, but they are ours. And so they are, you know, as you said, almost the starting point to the language that we use for ourselves um, and mm. what we say to ourselves um, and we can often start from a place of judgment and then it's having to notice that and then go I don't need to I don't need to give myself a hard time but I haven't done that today you know I could say yeah. this nicer to myself yeah I love that and it's in a way taking responsibility and responsibility having that ability to respond in it where we kind of come back to responsiveness. <laughs> so I always yeah. love to point out that responsibility, it's not a, I don't know how you grew up, but for me, it was something a bit burdening. It felt like, oh, then I can do it wrong. And later I started to understand, but that gives me, it empowers me really. I'm responsible. I'm able to respond. I'm even able to respond around these thoughts that seem to come from nowhere and that I don't really want. <laughs> what if I own them and go like, oh, yeah, right. Well, no, I'm not going to follow. And it can be quite challenging. You know, it's not that they have to be gone. That's impossible. Yeah. But it's like little, ah, thanks for the invitation. No, I'm not coming with you. <laughs> choice does with everything you know the, that yeah. power as you said the empowerment the power of choice you know yeah. we can choose everything that runs through our head and how we hold on to it or not hold on to it attachment um, as you said and and see it as something that we uh that we have the responsibility for no one else yes it's where we give our energy to 
our responsibility and it's, it's in the end the only thing we can do we can just decide where do i give my attention and energy to so if i want to be more responsive and mothering with myself and others well i kind of start being that magnet that draws in all that's connected to that and then it will come it's a tone of voice it's an attitude and like everything that we start learning, like a new language, well, we better be patient. It's not something now that I know it, I, I'll have it. It's a practice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a, a, a lovely note to leave it on. The, uh, the reminder for us to keep practicing all these things and not just something we uh, take off the shelf you know that yeah. it's it's the awareness and then it's the can the unfortunate but in the same way the magical um <laughs> practice of it to actually see things change you know and again um being able to even uh praise yourself for making those those changes for yourself yes and really it's the part of the experience mm. i mean that's why we live in a certain way i feel so things yeah. happen things yeah. can improve i can make an experience mm and i walk the path yeah. <laughs> and yeah. only when i look back i see oh yeah really really yes <laughs> i went quite some way so how are you mothering yourself for the rest of the day ah i have a, a treatment this afternoon so <laughs> really, that's an extra mothering today yeah <laughs> wonderful wonderful i need a haircut yeah. i'm going to get a haircut that's my <laughs> good yes so and i already mothering. had my hot water this morning that's part of my mothering yeah <laughs> beautiful well thank, thank you, you so much for joining us uh yeah. wonderful to just take 10 minutes to delve into uh mothering and and your uh i guess your your wisdom and your uh, intuitiveness around the topic um and to share that with everyone thank you for taking the time to do that maya Thank you for taking the time, Car Carmen, and for everyone to listen and get inspired. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.